All right, well, uh, Joe Bob's doing what Joe Bob does, uh, but uh, he's somewhere down in the crowd being Joe Bob. But look who we get. Nate Obringer, Steve Thurston, Jamie Zimmel. Come on, come on in the camera, guys, so everybody can, you don't want to talk on camera. Guys, good to see you. Hard to believe it's, the, the Nate, the, the last alumni weekend for the Icers program. Yeah, I mean, obviously things are going to change, but I think it's a good thing. I think we're going to continue moving forward. I'm sure that we'll still be a part of things in, in some regard, but good to be back. Jamie, uh, I know you've been following the team closely. We've talked a number of times uh, over this season. Uh, what do you think about this uh, this team this year and its chances going into national? I watched it very closely. Um, I think they have a great chance. Uh, four lines deep. Uh, I think even I talked to Daly a lot. I think this is the best chance they have probably since our years to make it to the Nationals. <laughs> and I take home a championship for the last year. It would be great. Steve, I'm, I'm going to change things with you. Of course, uh, you've got a great job with uh, Anheuser-Busch. That, that commercial that was done for, for Canada with the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. the flash mob, I mean, that's gone viral on YouTube. Can you talk a little bit about how all that came together? Uh, I don't know too much of the inner workings. I know that they did take the teams, uh, I think it was the Amigos and the... Uh, I forgot what the, the generals, right? And they had a, a Super Bowl party for both of them uh, after they made the, the video. And uh, just watching it online and talking to some people from Canada, it was a huge hit. And um, I don't know, I, I like to see that. I we always have some good ads. Uh, Budweiser sponsors uh, the NHL in Canada and not in uh, America, but they uh, so they do some really good uh, hockey ads up in Canada for Budweiser. Oh, of course. We, we know hockey north of the border, but um, just the fact that the, these guys, as I understand, I had no idea that this flash mob was going to show up at, at their beer league game in Port Credit just outside of Toronto. Yeah, there's a couple of videos that I've watched on, on Facebook and on YouTube, and um, if you watch the preparation going behind the scenes, they had something like 3,000 people that they shipped uh, and buses to surprise everybody, and um, I don't know, great coordination, probably cost a lot of money, but I... I it's cool to watch, so I'm sure it's worth it. Hopefully, sell some more beer. Oh, we had to get the plug in for that. <laughs> um, guys, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here because all through the season when I've been talking to former players, I, I ask them if you can encapsulate in, in one game or, or one incident that happened throughout your careers that, that defines for you what Penn State hockey has been about over the years. Nate, I'll start with you. I don't know if I would go so much on the game sense, but I think just going with the camaraderie and seeing the guys back here, I think right now we were just hanging out. There's probably we're 30 deep with, you know, over the couple of years that I was here with guys that came back. And I think those relationships that you build and, you know, that camaraderie is something that lasts a lifetime. I think that goes along with the, the uh, Icers family or the, the Penn State family that Joe Bob tried to instill for, you know, many years that he was here. So. Steve, I know you had that uh, last-second overtime goal at the Bird Arena. We had our, our last games there uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was it was you know it was almost tough to leave it. But same thing I'll, that I asked uh, Nate. Your your thoughts about what made it so special for you? Um, actually, yeah, I would say to encapsulate all of Penn State hockey, it goes back to that game. I ended up scoring the game winner in that second game, but um, what a lot of people don't know is I. I was getting my master's degree, and that morning I had uh, to go to a makeup class for a field trip that we were on earlier in the week, so I had to be at that class until about 10 o'clock, and the bus left at 8 in the morning. And I, because of rules, like I couldn't drive myself, but Downey stayed behind, got like a school rental car, however they do it, and he and I drove to the game behind the, I mean, we were like four hours behind the bus, got there right before the game on Saturday, or on Friday, ended up Saturday scoring the game winner and he and I drove back. So just the fact that, you know, he kind of figured out a way. I was going to have to miss the trip because I had to stay and go to class, but they figured out a way of, you know, how I could get there and, and without missing class. And, you know, I still ended up scoring the game winner and I was pretty cool. And that's just something I remember that the dedication and uh, everyone here really cares a lot. Jamie, the thing I remember is your parents coming in, watching you play on a Friday night, having to go home. To, uh, for your brother's game on Saturday and then listening to the Saturday game on a cell phone as your grandparents had it on the computer speaker playing it over the telephone. But what you thought about your career here? 
I mean, it was the best four years of my life. Uh, being able to play hockey with all these guys every single day for four years is the one thing I miss most about school. Uh, it's, I mean, it's great that we all keep in touch, you know, through email and text messaging. But the only thing I can really think of, and this term, people think it's overused, but it's definitely not, is that it's a family. And I know our class, we were a brotherhood. And it's just, I think it's, I have a lot of buddies that play Division One who don't talk to the guys they graduate with. We're very fortunate to have the guys that we have and the friendships that we made. And they're definitely lifetime friendships. And I think no other person can put that together that other than Batista. And he's done a wonderful job, and it's, it is a family, and that's the only way you can put it, and that's the only way you can sum it up. Well, that is a common thread, guys. I Steve. Would, Steve, I actually have one more thing. I know we talk about a lot about the Penn State Icers family, and, you know, some people, I think, from the outside, they, they might not understand, like, oh, yeah, everybody thinks they're a family. Uh, one thing that really stuck with me is uh, my senior year, when my father passed away, um, every single person on the team, uh, it was a Monday, we had the... the um, the wake and I remember being at the wake and uh, somebody coming up to me like there's like a line out the door there's got to be you know 40 kids out there waiting to come through and it was the whole team uh, all the coaches all the staff had come to the the wake and the funeral on Monday and Tuesday and the only people that weren't there were the people that were in China um, I don't know, it meant a lot to me and I mean that doesn't say much more about the whole family that everyone you know dropped everything they had to come to my side and something that I'll remember forever. Well, we'll all remember that, Steve. Remember the way you played through that whole uh, episode with your dad, and we miss him every day. Guys, Nate, Steve, Jamie, thanks for joining us. Much better than talking to Joe Ball. I can talk to him anytime. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot. Thanks. Talk thanks. to you later. Thanks. Enjoy the rest Congrats. of the game. Congrats. Thanks Congrats. very much. Thank you very much. Take a quick break. We'll be back with third period action with the Icers up 6-1 over Mercyhurst on the Penn State Hockey Network. <laughs>